Hello everyone, this is a video talking about the Ring of Kinship and all of its possible upgrades, or at least the useful ones. This video suggestion was from Epic Hilt during one of my previous live streams where I, uh, where I was dungeoneering. I thought it was a really good idea. So here it is. Um, the Ring of Kinship has 12 different styles that you can upgrade, and each style can be upgraded 10 times. There are specific situations where some styles might be useful, uh, for example, using the tank ring as a pure to reduce damage, but I'm going to talk about the ones that are used in general for your average dungeoneer. So, the first two are pretty much equivalent, but one is for melee and one is for range. It's the Berserker and Desperado rings. The Berserker gives a 20%, up to a 20% increase in strength when using an aggressive style, and this is what made people use two-handers over spears, because spears don't have aggressive styles. Uh, and Desperado gives you a 20% range level boost when using Rapid Stance, and it's really amazing for the Hex Hunter bow, but if you don't have a Hex Hunter bow, you really shouldn't be ranging in general, so it's not quite all that useful, because yeah, Hexes, I guess they aren't all that rare anymore, but they were pretty rare uh, for a while. Uh, so yeah, those are really good. Uh, Berserker is by far the most used ring in Dungeoneering. Everyone uses Berserker pretty much. So besides those, there's the Blazer Ring, which has a, has a 50% uh, chance when it's fully upgraded to deal 50% extra damage over time while using elemental spells, and this is quite good. It's also, uh, the Blazer Ring is comparable to the Blitzer Ring. Blitzer makes you cast faster, uh, but Blazer gives you extra damage. Uh, mathematically, they come out to be about the same but Blitzer is actually slightly faster, I believe, but I recommend using Blazer instead just because you don't use up as many runes because, it, yeah, you don't have the increased casting speed. So yeah, I'd go with Blazer. And then the final ring is Gatherer, which has a 50% chance when it's fully upgraded to get extra resources and have damage reduction when failing on skill tasks. So that's like skill doors where you can take like 500 damage if you get hit by something. So that's a nice one to have if you're running through a bunch of doors. It's also especially nice on that uh, mining room with the, uh, the rocks that fall from the ceiling where you can get hurt a ton. It's also worth noting that the gatherer's ring does not increase the experience you get from resources. So if you were to get double resources, you wouldn't get double experience from them. So just something to know don't want people buying it and expecting more experience. Um, yeah, so those are the main ones. You can also, uh, when you're in the screen where you upgrade them, if you right-click where it says Switch to, you have an option to do a quick switch. So if you have something selected and something on quick switch, and then normally when you're dungeoneering, you can switch in between them by right-clicking the ring and doing quick switch. So yeah, that's really convenient. Personally, I switch between Berserker and Gatherer, but if I had a Hex Hunter bow, I'd be switching between Berserker and Desperado, or if I had a Surge box, I'd do Berserker and Blazer. So yeah, it's just whatever gear you have or whatever you're doing, you can switch between them quickly. Also, you can't switch while you're in combat, unfortunately. I guess that might be a little bit overpowered, but yeah, just to keep that in mind. And then, now that I've talked about all of the classes that you can upgrade, uh, now onto the costs. So the cost for fully upgrading any one roll to tier 10 is 323k tokens, which is a ton. I mean, Chaotix costs a lot less than that. So tier 10 is a little bit out there. I don't really recommend getting tier 10s unless you're really going to be dungeoneering for a while. If you're going for 200 mil, or if you don't really care about tokens and you just want to spend it on tiers and get a little bit faster dungeoneering experience. Um, or if you plan on resetting your experience. So what this is, is you get one chance to reset your ring completely. So if you're going to be dungeoning up to 200 mil, you could upgrade your ring, and then once you get to 200 mil, you could reset it. Uh, so that's a good option. Otherwise, if you don't want to get tier 10s, but you still want good bonuses, you could get to tier 7 or tier 8. And it's this is a really good option, because tier 9 and tier 10 are what cost the vast majority of the tokens. Tier 7, cumulatively, for tier 1 to tier 7, it costs 12.9k tokens overall, and for tier 1 to tier 8, it costs 31.6k tokens overall, and they're not, they're a little bit worse than the tier 9 and tier 10, but it's not all that much. So yeah, I highly recommend getting it probably tier 8 if you're going for 99 Dungeoneering, or a bit above. If you're going for 120, then maybe tier 9. 
Uh, but yeah, that's a good option, tier 7 or tier 8. And in Berserker, Desperado, Blazer, or Gatherer, or uh, multiple ones, depending on what you do. Um, so yeah, that's everything for the ring upgrades. Now on to an Easter egg, or a couple Easter eggs for the rings. First off, if you use a ring on the fire in Daemonheim, uh, uh, you can just look on the screen here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. An obvious reference to uh, Lord of the Rings for anyone who didn't get that. Although, yeah, I think most of us would, I guess. Or maybe it's just me and knowing about Lord of the Rings or something. Um, but anyway, outside of Dungeoneering, there's a little different message, roughly the same. And then if you take it all the way up here, all the way to the Wilderness Volcano in the northeast of the Wilderness, and you try and destroy it there, you get another little Easter egg message. So... Yeah, cool stuff. Um, I hope this video was helpful and enjoyable. Uh, thank you for watching.